Yeah. Laura, call them graffiti taggers, graffiti writers, or spray can artists. They are in the mind's eye of most people, vandals who are turning the city of angels into a visual hellhole. Their sole purpose is to tag other people's property with their unsightly initials, names, or gang affiliation. The more times they do it, the wider their fame. The goal is to be number one, or at least in the same league as the infamous Chaka. Friday night on the Hollywood Walk of Fame, three young men while away the evening. But unlike the thousands of other young people who are in Hollywood tonight looking for a good time, they're under police surveillance, specifically the guy in black wearing the backpack. The cameraman posing as a tourist is a cop. He's trying to nab the infamous graffiti writer known as Chaka. What's this for, sir? Whoops, whoops. What's that? What's that? What? What is that? Did you do that? Nah, that's my friend. Who, what's his name? Huh? What's his name? Chaka. What's your name? Daniel. According to police, Daniel is Chaka. But not anymore since I'm here. Here is the Metropolitan State Mental Hospital in Norwalk, where 18-year-old Daniel Ramos is under observation while awaiting sentencing on 10 counts of misdemeanor vandalism and trespassing. Police say his Chaka tag is linked to half a million dollars damage from Orange County to San Francisco. At the height of the spraying frenzy, it seemed like Chaka could be seen on walls, freeways, lampposts, and even the main water tower in the town of Coalinga. The name Chaka comes from what? From this TV show, Land of the Lock. Daniel joined hundreds of other young people armed with spray cans and marking pens who compete with each other to get up. In other words, to write their stylized nickname or tag in as many places as possible. Did you work alone? Yeah, alone. During what hours? From 10 to 5. 10 at night until 5 in the morning? Yeah. How many cans of spray paint would you go through in that time? Around 8 to 10. He sprayed so much that he kept a map that was marked with areas he'd already hit. Where did you guys get the money for all this spray paint? For the ceiling racket. That's what it's called, rack. This high school dropout who grew up in Aliso Village says his biggest challenge was spraying chaka on the back of those huge signs that hang high over the freeways. So how did he get up there? I just used a belt, a belt, a leather belt. I threw it around the pole and caught it with the other hand. Plant made my way up there. Like a log climber? Yeah. Like a logger going up a tree? Yeah. Nobody called the highway patrol? Nobody, Nobody called, called the police? Me. Nobody seen me at the time. How long were you up there? For about an hour. You were on the sign for an hour and nobody saw you? Did anybody honk their horns, flash their lights, or no, any such thing? No. Were you wearing all black? I was black? it at four, 4 in the morning. 4 in the morning. Were you wearing all black or something? All black. Yeah. Mm. Kind of like the stealth tagger, huh? Yeah. He was arrested four times as a juvenile, but never prosecuted. The authorities say they're seeking jail time so that other taggers will get the message. Well, a lot of people ask me, why do I do it? Sometimes it's hard for me to answer that. I say it's the freedom of expression or a better way. Expressing the art. For many people, the idea that taggers who cause hundreds of thousands of dollars in damage could be considered artists is laughable. For Daniel Ramos, it could also be costly. On May 1st, he could be sentenced to five years in jail and fined $10,000. It's no use tagging. Tagging's no good. Yeah. I just like the art. Tomorrow, we'll go underground and watch graffiti vandals on a spraying rampage. Ramos, in a plea bargain yesterday, agreed to 1,500 hours of erasing graffiti and not to possess spray paint or marking pens for at least a couple of years. Fascinating about how he got up there. I think we've all wondered when we yeah. fly by how a person would get up that mm -hmm. high. There's a lot of stories of how they've done it, and uh, he explained it, put his belt around it, hoisted himself up there. I wish he could channel that energy towards something else.